All right, this is what the first four miles look like. Nice brisk morning. Good to be out. Welcome to episode 314 of the HRC Marathon Training Vlog. NK here with Cole Haven, Evan, and Anita. We're on a 10 mile recovery run today. Anita and Haven are doing seven and we're shaking out these tire legs from really good workout yesterday. Everybody did really good long runs. So proud of all the hard work. All right. If you missed yesterday's long run workout, I'll leave a link for you at the end of this video. All right. Today we're gonna to talk about how staying calm and composed can help make you a better runner. But before that, I'm gonna go home, get a little snack, get the kids off to school, and I'll be right back. All right, here's how the last four miles went down. Hey Evan, when you run really hard and you start to feel a little pressure, what did you used to have a tendency of doing in the past? Uh, I start to breathe faster. Mm -hmm. And when you breathe faster, you breathe a lot more shallow, huh? Yes. Evan had a tendency of reacting to pressure situations by breathing much, much, much faster and audibly. The faster rate of breathing in turn caused a much shallower breath and she was getting in much less oxygen than what she would have if she were to breathe deeply and a little bit more slowly. But under pressure, when Evan starts to panic a little bit, then she finds comfort mentally by breathing a lot faster. But she ends up slowly digging a hole and raises her heart rate, which in turn causes more pressure, which in turn causes more panic. Haven copes with stress a little bit differently. When she's under duress, during a hard run, she tends to start to breathe to cadence, meaning with every step, she breathes. So she ends up breathing really, really fast. And again, her breath becomes more shallow and she's getting less oxygen. And then she's feeling more pressure because her heart rate increases. And it's a domino effect of more reaction and more coping and more stress. Cole reacts to stress during hard efforts differently, but the results are similar. Cole's really good at keeping his breathing steady and not overreacting and not increasing his breathing rate. However, when Cole struggles, his form breaks down and he tries to use his upper body to will his legs to move faster and stronger. And when the form breaks down, he starts to feel some kind of pain in his ankle or his knee or his hip. Form breakdown inevitably results in some type of discomfort or pain and could also result in more long-lasting injury. The discomfort or pain that Cole feels adds another stress on top of the hard effort. Then that stress will increase his heart rate, which will in turn cause him to feel more pressure during the run. And although the source of Cole's pressure is different than Haven and Evan's additional pressure, the resulting panic is the same. In all three cases, the kids inevitably succumb to this panic and either want to shut down the run or slow down to a pace that's near a walk, which I'm sure all of you have experienced at some point and can empathize and relate. My good friend Brecht from Belgium, he's read all the books by Maffetone, the 80-20 book, Jack Daniels. He's read and studied them all and he's even 
used those books to build his own training program for his very first marathon. And he's learned a lot. Learned a lot from not only researching and studying, but also going through the training build and experiencing it himself. At a certain point in the training build, when Brecht started feeling a lot of pressure during the runs, he felt like his heart was going to give out and he thought that there was something wrong. So he took uh, two weeks off, went to the doctor, got a lot of blood work done to try to figure out what was causing this intense kind of negative reaction or type of panic that he was experiencing. Brex started to back up his running again, but he still goes through those feelings of panic once in a while and he's really not sure what's happening when he's feeling these intense kind of feelings of pressure. Brecht, when the body is feeling direct pressure, the body will shut down itself on its own. When I was an ultra runner, when I did not have enough uh, fluids in my body and I was dehydrated, my body would tell me and shut it down on its own. Whether it was through cramping so that I could not move or whether it was through extreme swelling, no amount of will or grit could allow me to move forward and continue on. My body had enough and my brain was determined to shut it down and there was no way that I was going to be able to take another step forward. So our brain has fail-safe mechanisms to ensure that we will not push past beyond a point that will put our health or our life in danger. Everybody has coping mechanisms for stress or pressure. Just like Evan, she breathes a little faster thinking that she'll get more air. Or Haven, who finds a rhythm and comfort in breathing to cadence. Maybe one less thing to think about. Or Cole, who tries to overcompensate with upper body motion in order to help his fatigued or tired legs. All of those coping behaviors resulted in panic. Brecht, I think that you have some kind of coping behavior. I'm not sure what it is, but something is happening to you when you feel pressure and you try to cope with that pressure with some kind of altering behavior. And then that's causing more pressure and a panic. This is the first time I'm not really sure what to tell you, Brecht, because in all three of my children's cases, they've all been different and I've told them very different things. I don't tell them very general things like, hey, be positive, you can do it. Make it to the finish line, make it to the end of the workout. I believe in you. This kind of encouragement is great, but it's not specific enough, it's too general and it doesn't resolve their issues, it doesn't solve their problem, it doesn't really help my kids. Evan needed for me to tell her to take deeper breaths. Haven needed for me to tell her to breathe off cadence and to breathe on her own. And Cole needed me to re constantly remind him about form and keeping his shoulders straight and his arm movements small. So Brecht, my best advice for you is to run with a friend. Run with somebody who's knowledgeable and experienced or run with your running coach. And when you do feel pressure, they'll be able to pinpoint for you what's happening. For you, what is your coping mechanism? And for you, how to resolve that. Brecht, I'm really sorry. I wish I had a very definitive answer for you, but I'm not gonna lie and I'm not gonna be just some kind of like a positive cheerleader. Um, being positive, I think is super important. And I know that that is how a lot of our viewers identify me as someone who's like super positive. But I think what's more important is that we're all really connected with our own running. We know what's happening. We know what's happening to our bodies. And then we do the right thing to make the right changes so that we can enjoy our time on our feet, out on the trails and during the races. Breck, please update me on how you're doing. And if you do ever find a solution, please let me know and I can add one more story and one more example for others who are trying to cope with stress during runs so that they can also go out and start crushing those monster workouts. 
All right. Thank you so much for my Patreon team. You guys are aces. So much gratitude, thank you. Okay, I'm determined to figure out how to do this Instagram thing. <laughs> and you can also find me on Strava. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Hey, make sure you like this video. Help it get out to as many people as possible and give our channel a sub if you haven't already so you don't miss a single episode of our daily vlog. All right, let's go. Man, after a big long run yesterday, I'm still hungry. I don't think I ate enough. I'm gonna go home, get me something yummy and carby to eat, refuel my tired legs, get some work done, talk to some of my athletes who are getting, giving me some updates, and enjoy the rest of my day. I hope you have a great day and a meaningful run. I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye now. Hey, shout out to all my friends racing in the Boston Marathon, especially Meg. You're gonna crush it. I'm so proud of you for all the work that you've done and all the fitness that you've built up. I miss a very busy life where number one, you are a hardworking mother and a hardworking police officer in the state of Washington. Just fantastic, your role model. I look forward to seeing everybody in Boston. I'll announce shakeout plans and uh, hopefully we can all meet up and say hi and I get to meet you in real life. All right, really looking forward to running from Hopkinton through all the different towns all the way to Boston with my good friend Dwayne Hyung experiencing the magic of the Boston Marathon. All right, let's go.